Phil in Framingham, Massachusetts. <laughs> I don't know why that city makes me laugh, just the name of it, Framingham. But I'm sure the people that live there probably say it differently than I do. Okay, I've always struggled to understand the impedance ratings of the outputs of preamps and the inputs of amplifiers and how one affects the other. What are some of the best practices in matching impedances? Well, some of the best practices in matching impedances is not to match them per se. So what we don't want to do is have identical impedances uh, feeding each other, which is typically not the case. So you always want the one that is the source. So if we look at it as a chain, we start here, we go here, we go here, we go here, right? So here is the power amplifier. Over here is, say, your CD player, your preamplifier, and your power amplifier, okay? Each step along the way here in this chain, you want the output of the device that's feeding the signal to be low, and you want the input of the device that's receiving that signal to be high, low to high, low to high. Now, at the output of the amplifier, you want the same thing, low to high. So if you can remember that, you all, the, the lower it is, the better. The higher it is, the better. And I'll talk a little bit briefly about why you don't want to go crazy. As in anything, it should be reasonable. But that's the way you match impedances, low to high. So the low impedance feeds the high impedance. Okay. If you want to have the highest impedance possible, I wouldn't look for an amplifier and choose it based on that high impedance, right? So our products usually have an input impedance of around 30,000 ohms, 30K. I wouldn't buy an amplifier that had anything less than 10K, and I would probably want to be around 15 or 20K minimum, right? A lot of that has to do with not the ability of a source to feed the other one, but you've got cable interaction issues, et cetera, et cetera. So just trust me on this one. Nothing lower than 10K on the input of an amplifier. And I don't think anything higher than 600 ohms on the output of a source or a preamp would be anything I would want to fool around with. And for that, you'll always have really great impedance matching. Now, when it comes to matching the output of a power amplifier to a speaker, now we've got to take everything down many, many magnitudes. So a speaker, like say the FR20s here, these have a four ohm input impedance, and they want to be driven by something very, very low way below an ohm. You kind of want that same sort of ratio. So our power amplifiers, for instance, are in their output impedance is in the milli ohms, which is a fraction of an ohm. So you, still, you want that, you know, whether it's an eight ohm speaker, you know, and, and there are variations on this, like a vacuum tube amplifier with an output transformer is going to have a, a higher impedance than you would with a solid state amplifier. Nonetheless, the ratios still apply. So low to high and you're cool. Okay, thanks. Bye.